On the death of the Queen, Farmers Weekly, in its editorial, said, and I quote, With the Queen's passing, the farming communities lost a great champion of its work. She recognised the integral role agriculture has in shaping the fabric of this country. She was patron of countless farming, animal, educational, community and environmental organisations, societies and clubs. More than 50, from the Farmers Club to the Fell Pony Society, from the National Federation of Young Farmers to the Royal Agricultural Benevolent Institution. She wasn't the first. George III, who many wrongly thought was mad, but wasn't. Perfectly reasonable fellow, was just a bit poorly. He was so keen on agriculture that he was also known as Farmer George. And, of course, the late Duke of Edinburgh was absolutely hooked on the countryside and agriculture, as is the new king. So, in this week's Rural Spotlight, I thought I'd do my own royal warrant thing. By appointment to farming, royal defenders of this green, fertile and productive land. Joining me now is Delmi Harris uh, for the Board of Management of the National Federation of Young Farmers Clubs. Uh, that editorial in Farmers Weekly was amazing. Yeah, it sums uh, the uh, Majesty up to a T, really, of her support to the rural network of the UK and beyond. Um, I mean, she was Queen of the Countryside, wasn't she, really? I, yes, and didn't have to be. That's quite. That's what's so extraordinary. How aware were you personally of that passion? Um, and anything when you noticed anything she did with agriculture, she was always beaming. She was always happy to be involved. I don't know if you recall seeing the 90th birthday celebrations and the cows appeared in one of the uh, um, performances. And uh, there's been a meme going around on social media when she saw the cows appear. The absolute delight on her face uh, at that moment. And of course, the corgis. Corgis are a herding dog from my own Pembrokeshire County, uh, born and bred. Um, the corgis were founded here and uh, she had them all her life as well. Um, and I was watching a documentary last night and uh, she says in it, I like farming. And everything about her was really rural, the countryside, um, Having the farms, of course, in uh, her estates, you know, I think she had the largest herd of Sussex cows, um, and I think all the family enjoyed farming as well. Even the grandchildren, the great grandchildren, and you know, the, the king himself is, is a huge supporter of of the agricultural industry. Yeah, and, and, and while you were just chatting there, Delmi, we, we were running some pictures. I, I, I don't know why a horse got in there as well, but I, I'm not complaining because I love horses. Uh, but the beautiful shot in Scotland uh, of the late Queen uh, with Highland cattle uh, in the background. But you mentioned there, I want to take you back to something you said, because it really is a serious reflection. This wasn't just a love of animals hobby. I mean, the Windsor farm is a proper, active, functioning farm, and there is a Windsor farm shop as well. They do take it seriously. Yes, definitely. It was, they, they, they run an industry. It was become a, they, they were commercially viable farmers, really, as well, you know, with the, with the Windsor estate, the Sandringham estate, the Balmoral, um, and... You know, she she understood everything about the work of the farming community. Um, you know, I think um, at one time I read something in the, one of the presses this week around the fact that she, when she was a young girl, she wanted to be a farmer's wife. And uh, technically she wasn't a farmer's wife, but she was a farmer uh, in everything she did uh, day to day as well. And her delight in everything rural Um we could always see in her face when she attended some of the agricultural shows, as we can see now, um, she enjoyed that part of it. And we were always, as a farming community, delighted to see her presence at any of our events.